So, um... I definitely should have talked about X2 and X3 in the same video. Not that Mega Man X3 is a bad game or anything, it brings a few cool ideas to the table that I'll get into, but... To be honest, I was glad when it was over. Anyways, let's discuss Mega Man X3, the final entry in the series to be released on the Super Nintendo, and the first to actually be released on the PlayStation. This story... is a doozy. Some undisclosed time after the events of X2, Maverick activity continues to occur, until a reptoid scientist named Dr. Doppler, who looks like he could be played by Jim Carrey, somehow cures them, making all Mavericks docile. These reformed reploids established Doppeltown, a utopia for reploids located near the Doctor, and they all lived happily ever after. Until the Mavericks started to ape shit again and attack Maverick Hunter HQ. Dr. Doppler is held responsible, and our boys X and Zero now know who's ass to kick. X and a now playable Zero, although for only a certain amount of time in each level and only one time per level and plays pretty much identical to X so it's pretty fucking pointless, wipe out all eight of Dr. Doppler's Mavericks and his two shitty sidekicks bit and bite in the somehow returning vile? You know, you know what, fuck it. X wipes out all eight of Dr. Doppler's Mavericks and his two shitty sidekicks bit and bite in the somehow returning vile. Zero doesn't do jack shit till the end. After taking care of Doppler, the Doctor tells X that he was corrupted by the still alive Sigma who lives on in the form of a computer virus, and that he was corrupted with the purpose of building Sigma a new physical body. X, per usual, slaps the edgy spikes off of Sigma's new and now destroyed back. Sigma's true form as the evil Sigma virus once again surfaces and chases X to a dead end, attempting to possess him. Depending on if you defeated Bit, Bite, and Vile with their weaknesses in the early game X Hunter style battles, Zero was injured in the first stage of the final level, gives X a Z saber, and disappears for the rest of the game. With X cornered by Sigma, Dr. Doppler shows up and uses his own body as an antivirus program and sacrifices himself to, I guess, erase the Sigma virus? If you didn't defeat all these bosses with their weaknesses, Zero is the one who saves X, having uploaded the antivirus software onto a Z saber, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> he then slashes in, of course, destroys Sigma. The big base goes boom, and would you look at that, X and Zero were back on the cliffside. X gets in his feelings as usual about how Mavericks won't stop fighting humans, and the game just straight up fucking says that in order to save the world, X needs to destroy Zero. God damn, he's right there. It's, it's kind of fucking awkward. Apparently that was just a mistranslation from the original Japanese version, though, since all it says there is just that X and Zero have to fight each other, not no, no death involved. At this point, we ought to know that these games are more about having fun and looking cool than having good stories, which is totally okay. Mega Man X3 does indeed look really, really cool. Maybe not as cool as X2 due to not being as colorful, and the game is actually pretty fun. Until you realize that this game is just plain as shit and covered in fluff. The level design is mostly plain and flat, relying on spikes and bottomless pits a tad too much to pad it out and feels even more linear than the first games. Aside from having these little teleporters that can take you to Vile's boss fight area which is only good for, you know, that fight and then it just self destructs. You don't need to go out of the way to find sub bosses this time like in X2 as the sub boss door is required to be gone through in order to progress. But sometimes there isn't even anybody fucking there. No idea how to get bit and bite to show up, but it's, it's whatever. Enemy placement is pretty shitty at times, and to me it kind of artificially inflates the game's difficulty. None of the boss fights are really that hard aside from a couple who spam these bullshit learning projectiles turning the area into a clusterfuck. Most of the time these boss fights can be boiled down to jumping over a charging attack, getting behind them, hitting them with a charged X-Buster shot, rinse and repeat. Weaknesses do still exist, but using the appropriate one isn't really necessary unless you're trying to stun like one of the projectile spamming bosses. Did I also mention that enemies do a metric fuck ton of damage here too? I will say that the levels are more accessible than in X2 though. Getting to collectibles such as the heart tanks, sub tanks, and armor pieces will still require a little backtracking since getting them usually involves needing to use a certain maverick power up or armor piece, but actually getting to said collectibles doesn't require the use of a guide and end game exploits like X2. The difficulty of getting everything ranges from just being curious about an ascending wall you're jumping on, to using a fully charged power up to use an elevator, or destroy some type of obstruction, or in this stupid ass case, defeating one boss. This time around there are more than just the regular collectibles too. If you manage to find this right armor after breaking a wall, you can re-access this same right armor in one of these little stations in each level. And if there's one of those, I promise you that's just the game telling you that there's a secret wall nearby that only right armor can break through. 
You can also find these, I guess, blueprints for different types of ride armors. There's a really tanky one, one with flying abilities, and another one that can be used underwater. The ride armors are used for quick progression through a level, but mostly they're really just needed to access more collectibles. Mainly these enhancement chips that go with their respective armor part. There are four enhancement chips in the game that add a little oomph to X's armor. The catch is that you can only have one equipped at a time. The leg chip allows X to do a double air dash, which by the way, the leg armor piece allows X to also dash straight up, so that's pretty damn cool. The body chip just increases X's defense, the arm chip gives X unlimited charge shots, and the head chip regenerates X's health when he is idle and can also fill sub tanks. I forgot to mention that the head piece in this game and it's actually really damn useful. With it, a map of the entire level that X is in will be shown at its beginning and will show the locations of collectibles. Also, whenever you've gotten the headpiece, a level select screen will show exactly what you've already collected or not in each level as well. And instead of having a Street Fighter ability, X3 has what's called the Hyper Chip. The requirements to get are the same as they would be to get the Street Fighter abilities, have every collectible including all of the right armors, and get to a certain point in one of the end game stages at full health. The Hyper Chip is really worth it though, since it gives X all four of the previously mentioned enhancement chips at once and turns his armor into this ugly piss gold color. And to briefly mention, if there's one thing that I can say about X3's soundtrack, just like the game itself, it's, it, it's alright. It's really forgetful aside from the track for the first level. With how bland and same everything sounds in X3, I actually kinda take back what I said about X2's soundtrack sucking ass. I still don't really like some of that game's tracks, but I appreciate it now because at least every song sounds different. Mega Man X3 isn't really a bad game at all, it just feels like more emphasis was put onto the new collectibles like right armors and enhancement chips and shit. As a lot of people have put it, this game has everything but the kitchen sink. All of the extra stuff that's been added is cool and all, but it's not necessary. Is X3 a fitting send off for the 16-bit era installments for this series? Not really, but if you plan on playing the Mega Man X games, there's no reason why you shouldn't play this. I feel like this review is a bit shorter than normal, but I honestly didn't have a whole lot to say about this game. Things are only looking up from here at the moment though. The next Mega Man X game we'll be taking a look at is, of course, Mega Man X4. One of the best entries in the entire series. Although I'm not quite sure if I'll be talking about it in the video directly after this one, I'm not really getting burnt out on the Blue Bomber, but I want to try to avoid that. Maybe we can do something different between X3 and X4, something more serious and divisive as of late. Either way, thank you all for watching, and as always, take care.